Hello, welcome to MyAirGunReviews.com. My name is Kenny and I have set up this website and dedicated it to the review of affordable air guns. We will review air rifles, air pistols, pellet and BB. We'll let you know how much fun you're going to get for your money or how much grief. We will also review some accessories, some upgrades and fixes. We'll let you know if your money is well spent or wasted on these things. So let's get started with our next review. Okay folks, what we're going to do here is we're going to completely rebuild the Ruger Air Magnum 177 caliber and we're going to make it into a high powered 25 caliber. Starting to get the parts. Ordered all the parts from Umarex. They sent me the three parts I ordered, all three were wrong, had to ship them back and they sent the new ones Pony Express still sent the wrong ones they sent me a piston with a seal you can see what the edge of the piston seal looks like this thing had been installed in a gun before they sent me two cylinder sleeves you know, have no idea why they did that. They sent me their own compression tube again. Uh, this was supposed to be the one with the welded on rail. They sent me one, I sent it back to them, wrong one, they sent me another one. Same damn thing. I swear to God, I will never buy another Umarex air gun again. Uh, but anyway, we're still going to see what we can do with this... Uh, rifle so sit back and watch I suppose I should explain a couple of things the first thing I'm going to try is going to use a Cometa seal rather than a RWS or a Chinese made Ruger and I'm using parts out of a uh, Cisco XSB28 um, I'm actually using the cylinder sleeve you can see in there the Cisco has a shorter sleeve than the Ruger and it has two shims and there are two washers you can see those two washers in there that kind of compresses the spring a little bit more so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this shorter sleeve that goes inside the piston with those two washers up there and Put just a little bit more tension on that spring and you know, we'll see how this uh, Cometa uh, piston seal works out. Here we have the receiver is all loaded. We've got the new piston with the Cometa seal on it in there with the uh, Cisco piston sleeve and shims and the original Ruger spring assembly our new T05 trigger is in there and we've got the back linkage of the cocking arm on uh, this piece also has to be transferred uh, and that pushes up it doesn't lift out when you take the screw out it pushes out from the side it is beveled inward a convex uh, bevel so that piece has to be replaced and we are now going to install our new 25 caliber barrel as you can see this one has no name on it uh, no Ruger name no serial number it's a 25 caliber barrel and we've got our muzzle brake on it all set three set screws in there so we'll now install the new barrel now that was all pretty painless we've got uh, the receiver all assembled the cocking linkage all assembled the barrel is in and she's now ready to drop into the rifle or into the stock and we can then test fire it okay we now have our Ruger Air Magnum 25 caliber all assembled it looks a little bit better with that 25 caliber bore 
So I think it's now time to test fire it. Okay, we are ready for our test fire. It works. Now it's time to crony it and see what we get. Okay, now we're going to try some uh, Beeman Silver Arrow 24.38 grain. Now we got a low of 640.3, a high of 652.5, average of 645.9, extreme spread of 12.29, standard deviation 4.24. Let's see what that calculates to energy. Well, that calculates out to 22.59 foot pounds of energy. It's less than I was hoping for but that's the most consistent uh, feet per second readings this rifle has ever seen so we will now take it outside and do a little target practice and see if that equates into uh, more precise target shooting. Okay we're gonna try a few shots uh, with the Beeman uh, 24.38 grain pellets at 20 meters. Give it another try. Well, the gun definitely did not work with the 25 car caliber barrel on it, so putting the 177 caliber barrel back on it, and we're going to go out and try it again. Okay, I've been shooting this thing all morning, trying to find a pellet that works and trying to find a hole that works, and I think I am starting to have some success, so I'm going to give this one more try. Shooting 20 meters, now shooting Crossman Ultra Magnum 10.5 grain pellets. Well, we had much better luck with this beast with the 177 caliber barrel. I've uh, tried several different pellets and uh, I was surprised that the Crossman Ultra Magnum 10.5s actually grouped the best. You know it would have flyers that were kind of way out but all the rest seemed to group pretty tight whereas the other ones that the flyers wouldn't go as far the main group wasn't quite as tight so now we're going to take a look at uh, the performance with the 177 barrel on it. Okay, we're going to start with the RWS 7 grain hobbies and then we'll try the Crossman 10.5s.
low of 1197, high of 1214, average of 1205. Finally, extreme spread is 16.82. Uh, standard deviation 6.63 finally got it up to the claim feet per second okay that was 22.73 foot pounds of energy with the 7 grain nobody will really shoot them but now let's see what we get with the 10.5 grains Low of 970.1, high of 992.2, average of 984.4, extreme spread of 22.11, standard deviation 8.9. Now we're going to try the H&N Barracuda 10.65 grain. At a low of 998.4, high of 1018, an average of 1007 feet per second. That's pretty good. Extreme spread of 20.25, standard deviation 7.74. Yeah, I know there are people out there that are interested in the raw speed, so we'll put a couple across with the RWS Hypervax and see if it hits 1400. Close. There, you saw 1400 on the screen. Okay, here's some of the old parts. You can see the big gap between the piston head and the sleeve that it go, it's crimped into and here I don't know if you can see how much this thing wiggles back and forth this this tail here is attached to this head and when the head moved up this part would no longer go down into the trigger and engage the sear so that's a pretty crappy design and it, I'm a little nervous because the the new piston that Umarek sent me is it's not this loose but it still is loose I don't know if you can see that movement there but that's a big problem See how worn the sleeve is that goes in there. The old trigger that had a chip in the sear. And the crappy old tube. This thing was so rough in here we could just barely get the piston in there without tearing up the seal. And the crappy mount here. So that's really the parts that we replaced. So we got it all back together got the original barrel on it and the original front side I didn't even feel like trying the muzzle brake on it I still have to remount the rear sight but, you know it's it's still very touchy to shoot you can get some really accurate shots out of it now but you still have flyers and uh, it, it's a struggle to keep the scope locked in place I think I'm gonna have to take that uh, crappy mount off there and put the UTG 
uh, a dovetailed uh, weaver adapter on it. So I guess lock, I might even have to drill a small uh, set for the stop to make sure it's really locked in. Uh, this one, at least the rail does come pretty much back up against the scope stop. Uh, the original one didn't, and as I showed you on the Ruger uh, 22 Air Magnum, uh, that mount did not come back to the scope stop. So there's a lot of inconsistency in their machining. But we finally have a 24 foot-pound muzzle energy 177 caliber uh, P driver. I don't know that I would want to go hunting with it because just about the time you get your prey scoped up, you're going to hit a flyer. But uh, that is that is the final result of rebuilding the Ruger 177 caliber air magnum. Thank God and good riddance. Thank you all for staying with me and watching this. Have a good day.